and it's probably very scary to think like when we get off the phone like maybe I'm gonna start doing this yeah. but yeah. that's you looking for that optimistic side that scarier side that harder choice and if you start doing this Amy it I think that your life is gonna be changed very quickly <laughs>
me too. And then I go, oh my gosh. Oh, I mean, that it makes me feel better. But plus, I don't want people to think, hey, you're not the only one that has problems. You know what I mean? So, but it helps me thinking, I'm not alone. Like, I, I, I know there's a, it's, it, I guess it's finding people that have kind of had the same road as I. Um, and I, I kind of like to surround myself with that because I feel comfortable, right? But I go, oh my gosh, somebody kind of understands me. If somebody doesn't understand at all where you're coming from, it's really hard to talk about it. It is so. very hard, especially because usually you, you find interest in the things that you relate to. You find interest in the things that you've spent a lot of time what like passionately thinking about or uh, you're emotionally connected to and if someone hasn't gone through it and they have no real emotional attachment to it a lot of times not to, to a fault of their own necessarily but sometimes they won't really be either they won't be actively listening a lot of times it's passive listening just like yeah like, yeah 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 like without really actually contributing to the discussion because they don't know how um, so I mean, it makes sense, and then also we we tend to want to surround ourselves with people who have similar experiences and thoughts and beliefs. Like it's very rare to find someone who's like I'm going to go find someone who believes the exact opposite of me and lives very different than me. It, it, it doesn't make that much sense. So I get it, and it, it's really interesting for me because it coaching people. I learned early on that everybody struggles with the same stuff. Like everybody, I learned very early on that everybody struggles with literally the same things and and no matter how how deeply you feel like you're you're alone or you're like it, it's unique to you in that sense like there you are not the first you are not the only it's it's odds are the vast majority of people have felt or do feel the same way that you do and even through coaching a lot of people i didn't really get it until uh my instagram started to pick up and I would post something. So for example, one of the ones that really sticks out in my, he my head was uh, my post saying, you can't fuck this up, which I had used, right. I'd, I had used that since 2014 with my clients is when I really, I think I, that was the 2014 was when I first started introducing a video that I would send them being like, hey, you can't fuck this up. And I saw the, res I heard, heard the response, but it was like from individuals, like just like one at a time. And in, it wasn't until I got over a thousand comments on that one post from, and they were the vast majority of them being, I needed to hear this, I needed to hear this, I needed to hear this. Just one after the other, just I need to hear this, I can fuck this up, like I keep thinking I'm fuck this up. It took that for me to realize like, wow, like everybody is in this, is, has these same thoughts, these same feelings of failure, these same feelings of, of not doing what they feel like they need to be doing or they should be doing. And it's, it, it, Compounds isn't because that the coolest, isn't, isn't it crazy? That the coolest it's coolest fucking thing in the world that we all are different. You look at somebody and you go, "Oh my gosh, they have this or they have this type of life," but yet we all have the same thoughts and feelings, the same insecurities, and that to me is so comforting. It is. It is super comforting, and it's also it's interesting because on social media. We talk about it. We people always say like, "Oh, it's it's the highlight reel. It's the highlight reel," but we also very much contribute it to our contribute to it ourselves without necessarily realizing it. I don't think people yep. are, are all the time consciously aware. I think sometimes they are, but not all the time consciously aware of how they're contributing to it themselves. That includes myself. I caught myself doing it, and I ended up making a video for the Inner Circle on it once. Um, yep. And and it wasn't coming from a place of malice or trying to hide. It was literally just like. Of course, you're going to post about the things that make you happy and that you want to share. Like, why would you deliberately go out of your way to post the things that like you don't aren't proud of or aren't happy about? So it's easy to be in your own head about all this stuff and then look on social media and be like, well, everybody else has it together, but I don't. Meanwhile, everybody is going through the same stuff, but they're all just posting the 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 things that they're proud of and not discussing the things that they're not, which it really compounds the issue. So it, it does. It, it, Listen, I'm 43. I'm 43 this year. Uh, 44 this year. Okay, I'm 43 right now. And I sat there and I go, you should know better. Not everybody's life is this beautiful highlight reel, right? But but yet, it, I seriously, I would sit there and go, oh my gosh, why aren't I doing that? How come I'm not doing that for my kid? 
First and foremost, and it, I just want to reiterate, this is so far from the first time I've ever heard this, as you know, and so it's important to know, like, I mean, think about it like this. Here's, here's sort of an example I like to use, and this is a, sort of an example I like to use that sort of explains why this, stu- this field of study is so interesting to me, is there are people who, at this point, everybody in the world knows cigarettes are bad for you. Like, everybody. Not a single person is like, well, maybe they're good. It's like there's a skull and crossbones on it. They're like, clearly, these things will kill you. And there are people every day who not only continue to smoke, but actually start to smoke. There are people who literally go buy their first pack. And they're like, okay, and it's a conscious decision. And it's something that's a little bit more related to fitness and nutrition is everybody knows that they should work out. Even, like goals aside, like looking good naked, whatever it is, like just for their health, just so that they can be healthy. Everyone knows they should, but they don't. And everybody knows they should be eating healthy. And realistically, like, yeah, there's a lot of confusing information out there, but people know generally fruits and vegetables are going to be the better choice consistently than donuts and cheeseburgers and pizza. But why aren't people making those decisions? And it's not to do with knowledge. There's deeper rooted reasons that people aren't doing it. And it's important to understand that because a lot of people, they're always looking for more knowledge. Well, what's the best program? Well, what's the best nutrition, whatever? What's the best diet? What's the best? It's like some, at a certain point, you have to stop looking for knowledge and start digging deeper, which is what I want to do with you. And I sort of want to circle back to something that you said earlier. It was actually right at the start when you, you were saying, you I have a block. You're like, I just have this block. Uh, which number one is very interesting to me because you wrote that in your email too. You just had this block. You know what you want to do. You know what to do, but you're not doing it. Um, and 
it sound like the more you reiterate that, the more real it becomes. The more the more you reiterate I have a block, the more you give yourself a reason to believe you have a block. Personally, I don't think you do. I don't think you have a block. I think it's more it's going to be more understanding like what's going on internally and mentally, but also calling yourself on your bullshit, um, which I'm going to do with love. But also, um, there was, there's something that you said that really stuck out to me was you said, I look at other people, especially the 20 year olds or something like that. And you say, and I'm behind. And you're like, I'm behind. And I want like, what do you mean you're behind? Like, what is, what is being behind mean? Like, what is, what is the definition of being behind? Well, I feel, okay, I'll, I'll, okay, so, had kind of an interesting life, not bad, but, 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 a, an interesting life, right? Grew up with, uh, a lot of drugs in the household, um, I, I have great loving parents, so let's put that as a side note, but they do like their party. So, I'll, I'll kind of start from, from where I think it'll be beneficial. So, I, I kind of grew up with that, and then I thought, oh, I'm never going to do that. I'm never going to be that. Well, I, I did, right? Always had a job. Always went to work. That was important to me. Always made money. And, and made a lot of money, honestly. So I wasn't smart in my money choices. Um, I, I wasn't smart in my, um, in my choices of, of, hey, I should probably get clean now because... Uh, even though my parents and my family all we kind of dr- like grew up in the drug culture, as I got older, all I think that's actually where it comes from. Okay, so what happened is my parents and my aunt and uncle they were all the partiers, right? So as they got older, and I'm not joking, when they all turned 40, all of a sudden like the switch went off where everybody decided to be uh, financially independent and uh, you know grow their finances and their businesses and, you know, no more drugs, uh, and got their shit together, basically. That's what happened. And that's actually what my cousins did. So even though they came from the same background that I did, I'm not joking. I look at myself and I go, financially, I should be further along, right? Mentally, I, I, I'm a spiritual type person, so I feel like I have that grasp. But when I look at a, a lot of, of younger people, I'm going, oh my gosh, this dude has a house? Like, oh my God, he's like 20. Oh, I, I'm 44 and I have a great job and I still don't have a house. Like, I'm behind, I feel like, in my finances, um, in my goals, in, in my goals, yeah. And I think that comes from working with a lot of younger people and I'm going, oh my gosh. This guy has, like, two cars and two houses. Like, he's, like, 13 years younger than me. Um, and I'm, I'm going, what have I been doing with my, with my time, with my life? When it comes to commitment, Jay, I am so terrible at it. I will stick with something for a long time. Uh, like, okay, last year, worked out. I, I worked out for eight months. I felt fantastic. I lost 23 pounds. I was still 195, but I was a happy bitch at 195. I loved how I looked at 195. I, I, I worked out hard. I had a lot of muscle. Super happy. But yet, I, I hop out of that, right? And I do things that don't make me happy, like eat like an asshole. Um, don't concentrate on my mental health and, and on my um, at working. Like, it just, I stopped, right? I stopped. This has been my pattern my entire life. This has been my pattern. So when I'm looking at these younger folks going, gosh, I feel like I'm very behind. Uh, and I saw that video of Gary Vee saying, well, whether you're 20, 30, or 40, you're, you are where you are. I mean, you are where you are. So um, I look at my physical health and I go, wow, um, look at Susan. Like, she was a little bit older, right, when she had had lost her weight. She is a badass. And I'm going, she's a little bit older, she's a badass, but she finally found that thing that made it stick for her. I'm trying to find that thing because I'm looking at people going, okay, it's about time I get my shit together, Um, financially and physically. Um, That's very important to me. And I 
I think I get flustered because I see all these people doing these things that I wish I were doing. And I have a very hard time sticking to it. I mean, it, it's a... Let me, let, it's me a ask you, let me ask you this, because yeah. I think you're, you're hitting on a really important point. And I want to interject right at this like, really important point. You're like, you get flustered. Why? What, like, what, what happens when you get flustered? Like, why you're getting flustered and what happens? Do you continue to keep doing what you're doing? Do you stop when you get flustered? Like, what, like why are you getting flustered and what, and what happens? Yeah, I, I think for me, um, I, I quit a, a job that I had that I didn't like so much to go back into the field that I enjoy. And I think, okay, so uh, last March, seems to be my time of year because I do really good March. I started taking care of myself. I said, this is about me. I need to take care of myself. I started going to the gym. I started eating right. I started sticking to gold. Um, in April, uh, sorry, August, I had a job change, um, which kind of shifted my priorities just for a little bit. But then, um, I, 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 I work across the street from my gym, Jay, and I have not been to the gym once before or after work, though I said that's what I was going to do. I'm right across the street. My job isn't that stressful. It's not that demanding that I can't take my ass across the street. I get so it. I, but I, I, I want to know. Does it change? Well, I want to sort of go back to the part where you were like, you look at what other people are doing and you get flustered. Yes. Why? I... I, uh, okay, because you know why? I only lost 23 pounds in um, six months. Does it, did you say you only lost 23 pounds in six months? That's right, that's right. It was March, April, May, June, July, August. It was six months and I had only lost 23 pounds and I saw other people losing a lot more weight than me and I got flustered, so I gave up. Got it. Okay, so there's a couple things, and you've, this is a really important point to hit on. Um, the first point, and this is the shorter point, the, the, more, the really even more important one is the one that's going to come after the second point. The first one is 23 pounds in six months. What is a good amount of weight to lose in six months? Well, you know, I, I was 220. Um, I went down to 195, and then... Guess what? I but I should be at like, you know, one seven. So I go. Even though I like how I look, I liked how I look. But I go. Oh my gosh! But I still know I must be overweight because I have this weird uh, Amy, body Amy, thing. Where, how yeah. much is a good amount of weight to lose? Well, I, I in six months. Probably be at least one seventy. No, no. So that you're I'm not, not answering the question. What? <laughs> you said you only lost twenty three pounds in six months. I'm asking how much would have been an acceptable amount to lose. Well, I would, I, I would have been happy at like 35. Would you? Did you well, just make that number up or would you have actually been happier? Where would you, where'd you no, all of a sudden get 35? I just really feel like I'm really fat. I'm really obese at 195. I need to Amy, be less. Amy, 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 Amy. Because we're, we're, we're getting in really good stuff right now. And there's a couple really important points. The, the main point that I want to stake on right now is how much is a good amount to lose in six months. But there's a lot you're jumping around because you have to remember, and this is all stemming from the point that I'm going to bring up after, which is a more important point. But earlier you were like, I was super happy at 195. I was so happy at 195. I loved 195. And now you're saying but I was still really overweight at 195 and I was still obese. Yeah. And it's like, I th what most people do is they're not happy in the moment. They're not happy with where they are or who they are. Then they backtrack. And then in their mind, they think, oh my God, I was so good there. I was so happy there. But in the moment, they're actually not. And it's easy in hindsight to be like, oh my, it's sort of like, have you ever looked at a picture of yourself from years ago and been like, oh my God, I looked so good. But Absolutely. if you actually think about your, your mindset when you were taking that picture or when you first saw that picture soon after being like, oh God, I look terrible. It's like, how could I have ever thought that about myself? That's what's going on. 
right now and that you're remembering 195 in terms of how you feel now it would be because you've gained weight since then so you feel like if i got back there i'd be finally happy but when you were there you weren't happy and so you were exactly right you are exactly right right now I know you are <laughs> and and that's why I wanted to interrupt because I wanted to like really focus on this one part because it's super important um, and to go to the to the part about the how much weight should you lose in six months I asked you that because you said if only lost 23 pounds in six months now the first line that anyone who listens to me at any like for any short amount of time will hear me say would you ever tell a friend, wow, you've only lost 23 pounds in, a, in six months, like you should give up? No. no. Of course no. not. You would never be like, wow, you've only lost 23 pounds? It's in, it's in six months. You've only lost 23 pounds? The fuck is wrong? Really? Right? You'd, like, you would never do that. Right. You would never, like, wow. No. <laughs> I mean, you know, you saw, you saw fucking Katie. She lost 40 pounds in six months. But you wouldn't do that. Like, but to yourself, like, now right. you're comparing yourself. And the reason I ask how much is a good amount is because this goes from an emotional thing to a logical thing. And you threw 35 out there. You literally made that up. You know, oh, 35 totally would be great. Did. I know you did. I yeah. totally did. Because I just want to be in the 180s. I don't even care. And like, you, you know what would totally happen? Did. You'd get to 180 and then you'd, you'd be like, well, I just want to get to 170s. And you'd get to 170. Well, I just want, it would never be good enough because for an, a number of reasons we'll discuss, but right now, when, when you m- were discouraged at only 23 pounds in six months, it was based off of, number one, completely made up idea of what a good amount would be, and number two, comparison to what other people are doing and relating that back to yourself as though, well, if I haven't done what they've done, then I must not be doing things right, which really, that's the, the next point that we're gonna discuss. but. Before we go into it, I want to hammer home because this is important information to have. Do you know what a good rate amount of weight loss would be for someone who's just like in general, a good how much weight someone could lose over six months? Like what a good rate of weight loss is? I don't know. Well, perfect. That's literally all I wanted you to say. I don't know. That's amazing because now you're not going to make up a random number. So yeah. let me ask you this, or let me just say this. Have you ever heard me say what a good average amount of weight loss is per week? Well, I think you've said one to two, but it doesn't really matter because progress is progress. Close. Um, a lot of people say one to two. I generally say half a pound to one pound on average. I didn't like that number. <laughs> I love this. Sorry. Thank, thank you for being Sorry. honest because because you didn't like that number because it was a lower amount of number and that would have meant that you were actually doing well. And you were like, well, in, in a weird fucked up way, like sometimes we don't like to be doing well. We want to justify going off track, right? It's like, well, I'm, it's just not working. It's, it's weird and we sort of like to play that victim card because it's easier to not do what we know we need to do than it is to do what we need to do, right? It's easier to be like, well, I'm just, it's not working, I'll go back to what I was doing, because it's easier to make those decisions and it's easier to just go back into our old habits. It's hard to day after day trying to do something that's very difficult. It's very hard. So now let's, we'll take this out number logically, half a pound to one pound a week. Half a, if you did half a pound a week over six months, so we have half a pound a week for a month is two pounds a month, over six months, that's 12 pounds, and you had 23. So between 12 pounds to 24 pounds, under what I've said, would have been phenomenal progress, and you were literally one pound under the highest tier. So if you look at it like that, you were actually doing tremendous. And one of the reasons I have a, a half a pound to one pound, rather than one to two pounds, is because I've seen the people who consistently strive to aim for one to two, they lose weight faster, but they regain faster. Whereas the people who strive for half a pound to one lose weight slower, but they maintain it. Just statistically, because the faster you try and go, the more you look for that higher number and it will not come forever. Whereas the more patient you are and understand, I'm gonna go for the lower number, then the longer you're gonna stick with it. And that's really, as you know, the key. 
So you are absolutely right because here's the thing. I've done this before, right? I've I've done this many times and I always go back up. Uh, always. Um I always go back up. I, I I have literally gone from oh my gosh, 220 to 185. Okay, after I had my baby. Um I, I, I take that back 230 to to 193 is what I did. And I remember going, gosh, 193, wow, I'm amazing, awesome, oh my gosh, I feel so great about myself. And then I go, oh shit, you're still at 190? Gosh, and when I look in the mirror, I go, wow, I feel like I like the way I look, I feel like I look good. However, I'm at 190, so 190 is a lot for a chick, right? A 5'5 five five chick? That's kind of a lot. So you must have some body dysmorphia, because uh, you think you look good, but yet the scale is reflecting something different so maybe i don't look that good or or uh i look at a picture of myself and i go i don't like that picture wow i didn't know i looked that big damn what's wrong with me but i always go up again from that that fucked up thought of oh my gosh i've lost all this weight oh my gosh i feel good i look good oh sorry and then I start eating like an asshole and then it goes back up so now right now today I'm at 210 um and I go shit that's only 15 pounds away right that's like only 15 pounds and I say I lost a total of 23 pounds because I remember looking at the scale going I made it there were a couple of days when I went back down to 195 but then I was back up at that 197 right so right now I'm at 210 and I go shit that was 15 pounds ago you can do that you can do that. You just didn't eat too much. You believed in yourself. You believed in yourself and you said, I'm going to do this and you did it. Where does that, where do I stop believing in myself? And then I go back up? Like, what kind of shit is that? What sense does that make? To go back up? I, I, I don't, and now I'm unhappy, right? Now I'm unhappy because I'm back up. I'm, I don't feel confident. I, quit going to the gym and I, I know that that gym is very important to me the gym is very very important to me but see now I don't want people to see me because I've gone back up right I'm, I'm hiding got it I'm 43 well, so, and I'm hiding so you're hitting on a lot of a lot of big things right now um there's a couple things going on number one is for think about this there's so much I want to say. You were saying, well, now I'm unhappy. Well, now I'm unhappy. But if you actually, like, honestly break down the process before, you weren't ever actually in a moment in which you were like, well, I'm happy here. Because you were always finding the thing to compare yourself to to show that you're not doing well enough. Whether it's the scale or someone else or what you could be doing based on a made up thing in your head. And it's easier to look back and say, oh, I was so happy then. But if you actually analyze what you were feeling, you were never happy or, or appreciating the progress that you'd made because it was always not good enough. That's number that's one. Right. And we're that's, gonna, that's a really important point I'm gonna go back to. Another thing that you said, the gym is very important to me. The gym is very important to me. The gym is very important to me. If we really break it down, it's not that the gym is important to you. And this isn't just for you. This is for everybody. Yeah. The gym isn't important to you. It's the results that the gym potentially will bring to you is what's important to you. That's what stands out in your head. If the gym was important to you, and I'm gonna like reiterate this, this is really important. If the gym was actually important, if the gym was, then you would go regardless of results, so to speak because the gym would be important. It would be the process of working out. It would be going to the gym. It wouldn't be the end result of what you're looking to hope for, to get from the gym, if that makes sense. So if the gym was actually that important, it would be like, well, it doesn't matter if what, what you think people might think of when they see you, which they probably won't anyway, but like it's, it's the results that are really the most important. And what's really, 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 really and this is the, the topic that I really wanted to go in on. It. And this is, I've spoken with a lot of people about this, and sometimes this is a hard pill to swallow. But it's, it's very important to understand this. And I'm gonna say, like, this is, this is more people 
Mo most people, there are a lot of people who do this, and I think everybody does this in some way in their life in some sense, and it's, it's very difficult to actually be objective enough to realize it, is that everybody likes to think they're a very positive person, they're optimistic. In every situation that you have found yourself in, you have consistently turned, in, in regards to weight loss and, and fitness, you've consistently looked for the pessimistic perspective in every single situation. Every single time you've found a reason to find negativity in your progress, pessimism in your progress, and you've yet to look in the moment for the optimistic perspective. And what happens is, so let's say you're, you're doing great, you're making progress, you're going, you're going, going, and then all of a sudden you compare yourself to someone else or you think like, well, it's not good enough or whatever, and that's when, in that moment, that's when you stop doing what you need to do because you feel like you fucked up, you feel like a failure, you feel like it's not working. And then, let's say you go up a few pounds on the scale, you don't go to the gym for a week, instead of looking for the optimistic perspective, you then compare yourself to who, to what was going on a week before. And like, well, I was happier then. Like, how in the fuck could I have let this happen? And it's a pessimistic perspective again about, well, where I was happy then, now I'm not even happy anymore. And it's like, whether or not it's even true, it's you reinforce these pessimistic, negative mindsets, and the more you reinforce it, the more you stop trying, because, well, why try if I'm a failure anyway? Does that make yes. sense? Absolutely, it does. Yes, it does. And, and it really all goes back to the, it's easier, and I, it's not a conscious thought process. It's actually, it's very unconscious. But and right. I, I've spoken about it a lot in terms of it is easier to take the pessimistic route. It is, it is human nature to take the pessimistic negative route because pessimism and negativity closes you off from opportunities. For example, if we're gonna look at it practically, being pessimistic about your progress prevents you from going to the gym. Going to the gym would, would open you up to new opportunities, meeting new people, putting you in situations where people are watching you and are looking at you and that is scary. So you take the pessimistic view so that you don't put yourself in that situation in which like, you might be uncomfortable. It's easier to take that pessimistic perspective because then you can stay at home, nobody has to look at you, and like, it's not fun, you don't feel good about it, but it's easier. The optimistic perspective would have been, I'm gonna go no matter what happens, I'm, gonna, I'm like, no, not gonna let what people do or do not think about me, I'm not gonna let it get to me, I'm gonna keep going, I'm not gonna stop. Even if the scale doesn't budge, I'm gonna keep going, because it's like looking for that greater good, looking for the optimistic perspective, and it's consistently harder to do that, but the reward will only come from that optimistic perspective and action. It, it, the reward never comes from the pessimistic. And again, it's always easier to look, especially in the beginning. I very much believe that optimism and, and positivity is a skill that you need to learn and teach yourself. I do think there's a genetic component to it in the same way like I'm, I'm five foot four. I will never be an NBA basketball player. Like there's genetic components to being super tall and whatever. I also think I'm very blessed in that I'm genetically wired to think more optimistic and positively. That being said, it, I consciously think about it every day. In every moment, I wouldn't say every single moment, but in many, many moments of the day, it's a conscious thought process in where, okay, here's something that happened, I don't like it. I can either take a negative, pessimistic perspective, and I'll play it out in my head. Sometimes I'll just speak it out loud. This is what I could do, or here's what the other option is. And it's always harder to do the, the optimistic option, but you never regret it. You always regret the negative, pessimistic response. You always regret not doing what you should do. You yep. never regret taking the harder choice and doing what you know you should do. And yep. this is where it's all that friction comes in that we speak about in the inner circle a lot. Susan and I have been talking about it a lot this year is like, Friction, that friction, you know in your gut what the right choice is, you know in your gut what you need to do, but you're not doing it because it's easier to take that pessimistic route. And my challenge to you, Amy, is to stop allowing yourself to, to believe the bullshit that you're feeding yourself, to stop allowing yourself to believe that you fucked up because you know you haven't. It's just when you allow yourself to believe it, you're giving yourself an unconscious excuse to stop trying. And the sooner that you, like you know it logically, you know this logically, now it's gonna have to be put into practice of, I'm not going to allow myself to quit because I know I have two options. Option A, don't do anything and forever regret it. Or option B, work my ass off and try as hard as I can and not quit because when I'm 90 years old and I'm looking back on my life, 
which option will I be happier that I took? Even, even think about this, let's say you never lose another pound, let's say you stay exactly where you are. When you're 90 years old and you're looking back on your life, are you gonna be happier that you just didn't do anything? You didn't take any action? No. Or are you gonna be like, hey, no. at least I fucking tried. Right? It's like you have to look at what is the optimistic perspective and you always have to take it. The, you, the optimism will always lead you down the right path. Always. It doesn't mean it's the easiest path. It's usually the harder one. But optimism will take you down the right path. It will always tell you what the right answer is. And if you're in a situation in which you're like, oh man, I'm not losing enough weight or like I should have lost more. Or, like I don't like, like how I look or whatever it is. You need to literally in that moment consciously break yourself out of that pessimistic negative pattern and talk and find where is the optimism in this and find it and chase it all right we are officially halfway through the podcast and first and foremost if you made it this far huge thank you i appreciate it this is definitively one of my top three if not my absolute favorite podcast because there's a lot covered it's much more than just the traditional like do this not that there's a lot of emotion coming out of it and i really appreciate amy for taking the time to talk with me so the challenge i'm giving her is coming up soon so keep watching pay attention if you haven't liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Actually, I don't think you have. If you haven't done that yet, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you don't already. And in the comments section, if you like me doing the podcast like this so you get the video feedback, let me know in the comments. And uh, I might do more of these. So thank you so much. I love you. I'll talk to you soon. That's exactly right. Everybody cares what people yeah. think. And I'm so glad yeah. that you called yourself on that because everybody in some way cares what people think. Oh, like it's just, and it's not a bad thing. I think it becomes a bad thing when you pretend like you don't, but you actually do, <laughs> right? And everyone, everyone goes on social media. I don't give a fuck 
what people think. And then meanwhile, like, in their head, they're like, maybe that post doesn't get as many likes as they wanted it to. And then they're like, oh, fuck. Maybe people don't like this post. Maybe we should take it down. And they're literally yeah. caring about what people yeah. think as they just wrote about what people don't fucking like. It's, and it, that unconsciously eats at people because then they're putting out an image that is actually not true. Whereas if they were like, listen, I'm gonna be honest with you. I care what people think. I try really hard not to, and then I catch myself. And here, here's really the difference maker. It's not not caring what people think. It's doing what you know is right, even if you do care what people think. It's doing what you want to do, even if you care what people think. It's not that you don't care, it's that I'm gonna do it anyway, right? That's the difference, that's where the strength lies. It's not like I don't give a fuck what they think, it's like of course I give a fuck what they think, of course. If like, if someone says something, like if someone says something that like is mean to me or rude about me, like I'm gonna care. But am I going to let that stop me from doing what I know is right or stop me from doing what I know is going to bring me the most, bring me or bring others the most value and the most health and everything? It's like there's, of course we care. We're just, the difference is, are you gonna let it keep you from doing what you know you need to do? And the other thing, and Amy, this is, this is, there are two things that, that really are gonna make the big difference for you. Number one is the optimistic, positive side. And I'm gonna be very honest with you. It's going to be hard. It is, and, it, and I've said it, it's very emotionally, it, I think it's physically draining to consciously and actively look for the optimistic side until it becomes a habit, but it's very hard. In, this, in the same way that I think, like in the same way that smoking is very difficult to quit once you've done it, it because like you crave that the, you crave that the chemical response that you get from that a lot like it's a craving and it's easier to fall into the ne negative pessimistic side because it allows you to not put yourself in an uncomfortable situation it is much more physically mentally emotionally draining to take the optimistic side because that always means action it always means doing it always means doing something, whereas the negative pessimistic side, it says like, well, I'll just stay here because why bother? And this is, this is the really big part that the other part is super important for you and, and a lot of people, but I really want you to understand this. What I've consistently heard from you over, over this call is you tend to go into your negative pessimistic side when you think that your progress is not enough for where you should be. And this is going back to the question I was like, well, when you're like comparing yourself to the 20 year olds, it's like, well, like I'm behind, I'm behind, right? That was the, at the beginning of the call, what does that mean behind? And I, that's why I sort of wanted to hammer on it because I knew where it was gonna lead. You, you always go into that pessimistic negative view when you think I'm behind. And the best way to eliminate that feeling of I'm behind is not just to be, it's easy to say, well, just be optimistic, positive. Well, how? If you are thinking you are behind, then you are inherently placing a time value, a timeline, as though there's yeah. a race, there's a finish line, there's an end yep. date. And the more that you emphasize that there, there, there's a race to it, there's an end date, then the more you will find reasons to, well, the progress isn't enough. It's been six months and I've only lost 23 pounds, which realistically, I know Jordan said half a pound to a pound, and I know this is on the higher end of fantastic, but it's just not enough. Because based on where, like this timeline. You need to eliminate the timeline. There is no timeline, there is no finish line because realistically, if you actually care about the gym and your fitness and your health, it's not gonna be done in six months. This is gonna be something you do for the rest of your life, right? It's like, there is no timeline, there is no finish line. Just do, do. And then once that's gone, it's much easier to remain optimistic and positive because no matter what happens, it's not like, it's, it's not like you lost time. It's not like you backtracked. I literally, I, I just spoke about it on Instagram recently. I took a week off of training and nutrition because I, I was sick, like didn't go to the gym, ate like an asshole, and it would have been very easy to then say, okay, well, I fucked up, I'm done, whatever, but because there's no timeline, it's very evil, I'll just get back on track now. And then you look at the, the results, you look at the scale weight, I hit my all-time high three, three peaks in a row over the course of a month. And every time after I hit my all-time high, in which most people would have quit, I had my massive drop. I hit an all-time low. And it's like when people quit, 
when they hit that that high and it's like well I should have it shouldn't be here well why shouldn't it why why shouldn't it based on what based on what science so, what re, like what are you basing this off of it's that made up timeline in your head that's, that's like well right. it should be eliminate that and all of a sudden the optimistic route the positive route is the only route that makes sense because quitting it it it's literally it doesn't make sense it's like why the fuck would i do that it's not like this is the right thing to do there's the right thing to do and the wrong thing to do and this is the right thing to do because i know in my gut this is right and you do it that's right well and, and that's one thing that helps me when you oh my gosh and that uh, oh my i wish i could do that uh muggle challenge but there is no way that i want anybody to see my my weight even though i'm telling you this this me and you right this me and you having a conversation and if people know that that's great but if my neighbor knew i mean listen i'm not hiding shit honey i'm i'm overweight right so i mean they'd go oh my gosh you're 210 um oh i had no idea you know what i mean that's not right but i'm sitting there going oh my gosh that is so brave it is so brave to post that and I heard you and Susan talking when you guys said that, you know, we were talking about the naysayers and maybe the people that were like, yeah, but you look like that, right? So, yep. of course, you you weigh this beautiful 128. Like, shit, I would love to, I will probably never see 128 again. However, uh, I'm sitting there going, oh, my gosh, that's so brave of you guys to to do that. Like, I, I probably wouldn't do that until I was much further along because I don't want that haven't seen me that's anyway. I'm gonna stop you right there I'm gonna stop you right there first of all I'm gonna, pre I'm gonna, I'm gonna preface by saying you do not have to do the challenge that's not you don't <laughs> but but I will say this we just spoke about not giving sure what people think right and it's not that you shouldn't yeah. care what people think it's about doing what you know is right regardless of what they will think right D literally it was like not letting the fear of what other people might say keep you from doing what you know is right. And again, you don't have to do the challenge, that's not the point. But this is the perfect example of, you know what would be right here, but you're not gonna do it because you're fearful of what your neighbor would possibly say about it. And like, let's say for example, you ended up having a conversation, let's say you did it, and you don't have to at all, let's say you did it, and then your neighbor was like, oh wow, like 210, I had no idea. Like, first of all, maybe they didn't have any idea, but second, you could just be like, ah, shut the fuck up. You know I'm overweight. <laughs> right? Like, it's, totally. you, don't, you don't, like, just Absolutely. listen. I'm not I, like, hiding anything. Well, that's exactly right. It's like, and I think it, it's so interesting. I've gotten a lot of people, I stopped posting them on my story because there was just a lot of feet on my story every day and it got to be a little bit too much. <laughs> but I see it, there are a lot of people still doing it and there are people in the 300s doing it like mid to high 300s. Oh, I love that. And I love that. again, I mean, I think like it's got to be super hard for them. But then, you know, it's interesting. I mean, I have people who are barely over 100 pounds. One, one actually woman who's slightly under 100 pounds and she was petrified to do it because she was getting shamed for it. Well, like it's easy for you. Like, and she was starting to get shamed. No matter where you are, whether you're super skinny or super overweight, there's always going to be negative feedback. There's always going to be the, the fear of what other people think. Always. Always. But again, like, there was literally someone getting shamed because people thought they were too skinny. Or it's, it's like, well, thanks for showing off versus the other person. Now it's like on the other side. It's like everyone is going to have that in some way. For me, every single day I'm getting multiple messages of like, holy shit, like, you're really short. Like, because it's like I'm relatively lower weight for a guy. Because I'm fucking, I'm tiny, I'm 5'4". So I'm getting a lot of that. And then I'm getting a lot of, and here's, th check this out. I'm getting a lot of women being like, oh my God, I feel so bad. You weigh less than me. And, and I, if you think about it, if you really break that down, it's fun. I respond, I'm like, so does that mean I should feel bad that I weigh less than you? And, th and they're like, they're like, why would you feel bad? I was like, well, if you feel bad that you weigh more than me, then that implies that I should feel bad that I weigh less than you. Because apparently a guy is supposed to weigh more than you. If you're saying a girl is supposed to weigh less than a guy, that means a guy. And, and so no matter where you are, there's always going to be people 
there's always going to be situations that you can find a reason to not just care what people think, but prevent, but let what other people think prevent you from doing what you know is right. And again, I'm going to reiterate, you do not have to do the challenge, but it's, I wanted to really hammer home on this topic because you just provided the perfect example of when you would let what someone might think prevent you from doing what you know is right just because of what your neighbor might fucking say and it's like I called that out because this is what you have to do to yourself you have to be super analytical of your behavior very objective your behavior why did I say why did I say this why did I make that choice and like not just think about it in your head actively discuss it out loud because only once you say it out loud can it really become logical can you really like I mean, have you ever been talking with somebody and then all of a sudden like you'll be you'll be super upset about something you'll be really like angry or sad or whatever and you're like you need to talk to someone and you start telling them and then as you're saying it, you're like this sounds silly I know this sounds so silly and like it sounds silly as I say it but like because in your head you were just like so emotional about it and as soon as you get it out verbally you're like well what the fuck like that makes no sense like I was just riling myself up for no reason and the only way to really be objective and logical about your behaviors is to a lot of people write them, but I think verbalizing them is probably the best way. And, I agree. And I agree, because I have to hear it verbally. So you have to do that, and, and I'll tell you what. I think it would be very uncomfortable for you to do the challenge. Agreed. And I also think that when you're 90 years old looking back on your life, you're not going to look back and say, wow, I'm really glad I didn't do that challenge based on what my fucking neighbor th might have thought. But I bet you would say, wow, I'm really glad I did that challenge because that forced me out of my comfort zone and it possibly changed the course of my entire life. You know, I, you are, so listen, you're spot on because you see me going, yes, you're right. I want to do, I, yes, yes, ooh, but, ooh, right? Like it's, that's that, that thing kicking in going, ooh, I don't, mm-mm. But, but I've taken chances before, been optimistic, and they have worked out so well. And do you know what? In the last five years, I haven't taken many chances, and I'm not where I want to be. So I actually feel like if I were to, say, do this challenge, right? If I were to challenge myself in many ways, hey, let me think more positive. I have to be more optimistic. Let me... Hey, this is something that really affected me my entire life. My weight has affected me my entire life. Maybe that would just help me and break me out of that same fucking cycle that I have been in for a very, maybe this is the one thing that will take me out of that cycle and put me into that optimistic state where I will accept challenges no matter how scary they are and, and no matter how stupid because my kid doesn't think it's stupid right my, I, I, my kid doesn't know that other people are, are talking to their wives going oh my gosh did you see how much Amy weighs my kid doesn't care about that but my kid will care about me being around in another 20 years because I decided to take care of myself that's so, right and think about this do you think your kids would be proud would be more proud of you for not doing it because you were nervous and scared? Or do you think your kids would be proud to tell their kids, you know what, you know what grandma did? Grandma literally one day at 43 started posting her weight on Instagram. And she said, she was fully honest about it. She said, this is scary as shit for me. This is probably the scariest thing I've ever done because I'll be honest with you, I care what you think. If you're reading this and you're seeing my weight right now, I care what you think, but I have to do this because I know that if it's scaring me, I'm gonna grow from it. And I know that when I'm 90 years old, I'll regret not doing it. And do you think that your kids would be more proud of you for doing that, telling their grandkids, or for, absolutely. And that, this is where optimism always goes. And that's why I like that question, what are you gonna think when you're 90? Because the answer is always optimistic. You, you always oh, find yeah. the optimistic, well, and it's, it's a very simple, it's a yes or no, do it or not do it. When I'm 90, will I regret doing it or will I regret not doing it? The answer will always lead you to the optimistic perspective and is always gonna tell you what the right answer is and it's always gonna be the harder one. And that's always the one that you should do. And, and I'll tell you what, I very much, like, 
I can't even begin to tell you how deeply and powerfully I very much feel that if you do this, it will literally change the rest of your life and possibly your children's lives and their children's lives. I very much believe it will change the rest of your life. Thinking of, you said, you said you've struggled with your weight your whole life and it's probably something that you've hidden your whole life. It's something that you've not shared purposefully. What if all of a sudden it's not something to hide? What if all of a sudden you make this just, this is me, and now you have nothing to hide. When you have nothing to hide, there's only upside. I mean, listen, I used to not take my, I have a, I have a girl, she's, she's five now. I did not take her anywhere for the first three years of her life. Like, I, we didn't, and I mean, listen, I, it, I, I, I yeah, I didn't take her anywhere. I, I'm, I'm, she's, she's been to the, uh, the zoo with other people, not me. I mean, I didn't want to go outside uh, because of people with me. I can't imagine how freeing that would be, but I'm going to do it because she deserves it, but I deserve it. You're going to do it because you deserve it. And because right. it's funny, there's all this like talk of like deserve and like I see this a lot on, on social media, like you deserve it, you deserve it, you, you deserve what you earn. And right. I'll tell you what, if you push yourself outside this comfort zone and do something that is radically different and radically uncomfortable and you know you'll regret not doing it down the road, but you push yourself to do it anyway, you've earned the right to deserve that. Now you've earned the right. You don't earn it until you deserve, you don't deserve it until you've earned it. And doing that, pushing yourself outside that comfort zone, now you deserve it. And then you'll earn it. Well, that's a, well, that's a good point. Look at you, filled with good points, my goodness. But I, I'm very excited. I'm super excited because I meant it when I said, you don't have to do it. I wasn't saying like, in my mind, I was like, okay, she, she has to do this or hopefully that she'll do it. But you came up with that on your own. You're like, you know, maybe I should do this. And that is the perfect example of you all of a sudden taking an optimistic perspective, making it a habit. And it, I bet that was pretty scary to think. And it's probably very scary to think like when we get off the phone, like maybe I'm gonna start doing this. Yeah. But yeah. that's you looking for that optimistic side, that scarier side, that harder choice. And if you start doing this, Amy, it, I think that your life is gonna be changed very quickly. I, 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 I agreed, agreed. I, I, and I will probably have my tough moments right now. I feel good probably because I'm talking to you and because it, I feel a little bit safer and I go, yes, I'm, watch me go, right? And then I'll probably get nervous, but I, nothing came, nothing made me feel, I didn't feel good taking the, the, the slow, the, the, how do I want to say this? Um, I always had to work for things. And when I worked really hard and I got them, I was very happy, right? It made me, it's very satisfying. And I think if I can tweak this now, fix this now, and internalize it, really internalize it, I really do believe that it is literally the key to changing my whole life. Um, so I know I have to do this because this will this will be that satisfaction that I will have forever. I, I, it's time. I feel like it's time. I feel like I'm ready. And I feel like that's just enough. Like, and I, you know what? You know what? I always thought I was so positive. And then I even questioned myself one day, like, gosh, am I like kind of being like negative a little bit? Am I kind of being like a, a pessimist a little bit? Nah. And then I would, I would go over it like, no, I'm, I'm still positive. I'm still positive. I even wrote to you in that email two times, I think, that I was positive. Yep. Yes, And if you, did. you listen to this conversation, you'd be like, uh, but are you? It's, are and just you? so you know, like, it's very common. I, I literally, I had a, the, I, I have a conversation with a lot of people about this, like specifically being optimistic or positive. And I'll never forget this one conversation that I had with a, a client of mine. 
and I do this a lot, like very early on in the, in the process of working with people, where if I notice someone is being very negative in everything that they say, and it's very, it's much easier because it's all via email and it's all written out. Um, I'll say like, hey, let me ask you a question. I'll say, do you consider yourself more of a pos positive person or a negative person? I've never had one person say, I'm negative. But I'll never forget this one, this one time, and this one person was like, I I'm, I'm very positive. I'm very positive. And I was like, do me a favor. Go back and read the emails that you've sent me over the last week and tell me one thing that you've said like literally copy and paste it that is a positive optimistic perspective and they couldn't and they were like oh my god i didn't even realize every email i've written you over the last week has been overwhelmingly pessimistic and negative everything Every, even all the things that happened that were good they made bad and it's it's so common and it's so and it's and it's very easy to to look at the optimistic side for your friends and your family and your loved ones and your colleagues, yeah. even for people who you fucking hate, it's easy to look for right. that optimistic side. Yep. For yourself, yep. it's very difficult, but that means it's the right thing to do. And so, Amy, what I, I'm very excited to see you do this, and I, I wanna leave you with this, I wanna leave you with this one last bit. Two things, number one, it is going to be unbelievably difficult for you to do it. And that's not a reason, not, it, if anything, it's a reason to do it. It will be very difficult, it'll be very scary, it'll be ner very nerve wracking. And that's okay. Every time before I publish an Instagram post, before I publish a new edition of the Inner Circle, before I publish a YouTube video, before I send a client a new program, I am nervous every time. But imagine if I didn't. And I'm, I'm nervous because I'm worried what people are gonna think. But that doesn't keep me from posting it. So it's going to be nerve wracking. It's going to be scary. So that's number one, it's not a bad. Number two is, in the same way, like this will be revealing something that you've always hidden. It goes back to honesty is very freeing. And like that highlight reel thing that we do subconsciously sometimes in which we, like it would be very, it would be easier for you in this situation to go on and say, I don't care what people think. I'm gonna post my weight because I deserve this, this is for me. That's what most people would do in the situation when in reality they're super nervous about what people think, they really care. Whatever you're feeling, really try and become very in touch with how you're feeling during this process. And if you're like, if you're, I'm scared shitless of what people are gonna think, you should say that. They're like, here's my weight. I am scared shitless of what you think about my weight. But I'm not gonna let that stop me from posting you know, not because I deserve it, but because I know that this is the right thing to do. And even though it scares the shit out of me, I know that I need to do this in order to reach my goals. And I hope you support me. I hope you encourage me. I hope you, you are, are positive and optimistic. Um, and that's all I can say. And I wish, you, like literally, just like say exactly how you feel. Because when you say exactly how you feel, you have nothing to hide. And when you have nothing to hide, you don't feel like a failure. And when you don't feel like a failure, then there's only positive upside. I love that. I love that. That's so right. Because you know what? I couldn't imagine all those fantastic posts that you put out there. To us, they're fantastic. Right? And so I'm sitting here going, oh my gosh, Jordan has to sit there and look at it and wonder who, who is, I mean, is this negative? Are people going to think about it? But we love your posts. You have a whole grip of people that love your posts. Right? We live for those posts. So. And I, every time I'm scared shitless. I, it's crazy. You know, every time, every time before I publish an edition of the Inner Circle, I say like a, a prayer. Every single time. Good for you. Good for you. And, Good and for it's, you but it's because what's my choice? My choice is don't do it because I'm scared. No. And then no one, like, nothing good happens from that. Or. We would miss out. And, and I'm, one day, Amy, you and I are gonna be having dinner after you've done some really extraordinary things and we're gonna replay this phone call and the, what you just said, you would miss out. And to think that what I think that this challenge is gonna do for you, what it's gonna spark for you, is like you would have missed out 
on all of the amazing positive things that are about to happen because you're about to push past your comfort zone in a way you've never done before. Okay. I'm not crying. <laughs> I'm not crying. But. You're crying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Okay. You got this? And when I think about it, I'm going to think about you praying before you put out any content because, like, that's the shit that we need, right, in our life. So, okay. All right. I love you, Thank Amy. You so I'm excited. Much. I'm, I love I'm, you. I'm impressed. I'm proud, and I am beyond excited to see what you do. And and I know that it's going to be scary as shit. And that is why I know it's going to lead to so many great things because you're going to push past and push past and push past. And the more you push and the more you overcome, the more success you're going to you're going to have, and the more you're going to inspire other people too. So, I am. Uh, I'm yeah, very excited, and, I'm, and I can't wait for that dinner we're going to have in 20 years and uh, look Thank back you. on this, and it's going to be amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Amy. And, and I love listen, you. Listen, yeah. I, I, I need dinner before 20 years. Oh, we'll have dinner along the way. I'm just excited okay, for that, okay. for that okay. one that we play this back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I love you. I love have you, a great Amy. Day. Thank you. You too. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. That was a great, that was a great call.